County Fairgrounds USA, countyfairgrounds.net. Welcome to today's podcast. I'm the County Fairground Lady, and I think I have Mr. Billy Buchanan on the line with me, do I not? You do. And who, please, tell our audience in your own words, who is Mr. Billy Buchanan? Wow, that's a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'll give you the I'll give you the simple answer. Um, well, I'm a full time musician. Um, originally from Cleveland, Ohio. Um, I've lived in Atlanta. I've lived in Nashville. Um, but I live in St. Augustine, Florida now. I tour out of there, and of course, I live there with my family and stuff. Um, but yeah, I play. Um, you know, I've done a lot of music over the years, but my my I, I guess you would say my expertise is in fifties and sixties soul music. So I play um, you know, all the all the amazing musicians from that era, Sam Cooke, um, Otis Redding, all the Motown cats, Marvin Gaye, Stevie Wonder, The Temptations, Wilson Pickett, Percy Sledge, um, James Brown, and the list goes on. Of course I can't forget Chuck Berry and Little Richard and all the the pioneers and the innovators, and I play all that music. Um, and I play a lot of original music influenced by that era, but that's definitely my, my passion is to keep that music alive. Does that answer your question? <laughs> you know, Mr. Billy Buchanan, I was born in 1949, and you're talking about my era of nice, great music, and it was right. wonderful music. <laughs> yeah, it was great. I mean, yeah. you had beat it has fun it makes people happy That's so right. okay the the next question i'm going to ask you is how did you ever get started in this you know i always tell people I, I felt like i didn't have a choice i mean it really did call me from a really early age um my mom's a piano player um all my uncles played guitar my grandmother sang in church and so it was just always around me and my dad, it's funny, he's not a musician, but he's a huge music lover, so he had this awesome album collection. I remember being a kid, and all my friends would be outside playing kickball, and I'd be inside listening to all my dad's records. And he had everything from all the soul stuff, like um, you know Al Green and Earth, Wind, and Fire and all that. But he had all the rock stuff, too. Led Zeppelin, he had Crosby, Stills, and Nash. He had Jimi Hendrix. He had Janis Joplin. He had a lot of country, a lot of gospel. So it was just always around me. Um, but I, I, I remember singing pretty early in church, probably, you know, uh, five, six years old. And then once I got in school, my mom saw my my love for music, and she made sure that I was in every, you know, choir class or band class or whatever. And I, you know, I came out of um, high school, I had a boy scholarship, went to Cleveland State. Then I moved down to Atlanta, went to the Atlanta Institute of Music. And just music was always a huge part of, of me, you know. Um, but it took a while, you know, a lot of years to kind of, you know, hone my craft and figure out who I was in the middle of all of this. There's just so much music out there and so many artists, you know, and it's like, what can I do to stand out, you know? And so it's it's taken me a while to figure that out, but I think I have, you know, at this point, you know. Okay. Well, I'm going to ask you, what is that? What is that? Well, again, it's the, it's, it's playing that What music. What makes you – go ahead. No, it's just, you know, it's, it's playing, you know – it's funny, I remember a lady came up to me at a show once. I was doing a solo date, just an acoustic date, and, and at the time, this was probably, I don't know, seven or eight years ago, and I was, you know, I was playing everything that was on the radio, you know, whatever was popular, John Mayer, Train, or whatever, but I would throw in, of course, all the old soul stuff that I love, and I'll never forget this lady walking up to me, and she said, you know, you play all that other stuff fine. She said, but when you sing this stuff, and she was talking about the <laughs> Otis and the Sam, she says, when you sing yeah. that stuff, I can tell it's coming from your heart. And that yep. really, really resonated with me and stuck with me. And, and from that point on, I really started to rethink what I'm doing and what do I really love? What music do I really love, you know? And then I just started, I stopped playing all that stuff that was just kind of, you know, I don't know. I don't, it was just kind of fluff, you know, for me. It wasn't really my passion. I was just doing it. I just started playing the music that I love, and it's really – really started to resonate with people, and they really, they can feel my passion for that music, you know, so it's cool. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, but that's what that ear, I think, was all about, the passion of yeah. music and oh, the yeah. dance. Oh, yeah. yeah, oh, the dance. That's right. <laughs> oh, I, yeah, I have a huge dance community following, you know. They come and they do all the Lindy, you know, string stuff, and they, they shag, and they watch to see, and it's really neat to watch it, you know. Mm -hmm. They love yep, it. Yep, yeah. I remember. It was a good workout. It was a good workout, and it made you feel good. And, yes, boy, I... we all need to feel good. That's so. right. That's right. 
Mm-hmm. Okay, so now tell me about some of the performances that you have done and where you have played and what you remember and what you love the most. Wow, um, I've been really fortunate. You know, I've I've I've, I've kind of lived the dream. You know, I've you know played, of course, a lot of small shows where I play in front of fifty people to hundred, and then I've opened for the Temptations and the Four Tops and Shaka Khan and Tower of Power and Harry Connick Jr. and I've just done it. You know, I've traveled all over the world. I've um, I've played in all 50 states. I've played in 26 countries. Um, I've, man, in a short amount of time, I've really been able to, and I've, again, I, you know, I still live in Nashville, and I tour with a lot of national artists, and so I've been able to, to see the world and do what I love. It's been a really, really awesome journey. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, I understand um, that you want to play at county and state fairs. Why is that? You know, man, I... I think it's a an untapped audience for me. Um, I think there are a lot of what I call regular people who love the music that I play, you know, and um, and they're all over the country. And I was like, I was talking to my manager, and I was like, man, I, you know, actually the idea kind of popped in my head because I, I I do these tribute shows where I I'm so I have so many layers, you know. But one of the things that I do is I um, in order again to keep this music alive, that I love this the, the soul music from the fifties and sixties. I do a lot of my shows. And characters, the artists that I do. So I'll do Chuck Berry, Little Richard, Ray Charles, Stevie Wonder, David Ruffin from The Temptations, Sam Cooke. I do it like in character, costume, the whole deal. And right now I'm actually on residency um, with Legend in Concert, which is the biggest tribute show in the world. And I'm at the Branson location doing a two month res- residency right now. We're actually in our last month. Um, but anyway, I was talking to uh, one of the guys on the show and he was telling me that he does a lot of the fairs and stuff. So we started talking about it. He's like, man, I was like, really? He's like, yeah. And he said, that it's really cool because you get to play in front of so many different kinds of people that might not come to your shows, you know. And it's it's just a really untapped audience. Like, man, I need to look into that. So that's honestly where the idea came from, for me. Mhm. Mhm. Yeah. Well, and, one of the reasons one of the reasons I do what I do is because county and state fairs are happy. They're always happy. We need happy. Yeah, I love that. And. Right. And a while back, I went through a bad period in my life with some problems. And then I started doing this. And, you know, the county and state fairs have problems. But when people go there, they always have a good time. Ah. And that's what it's all. Yep. That's what it's all about is having a good time. Okay. Well, so do. do you do you come with a band? Do you, well, yeah, I come whichever way they hire me. I, I do solo dates. I play with a full. I play from up to solo up to the 10-piece band, just whatever's required, you know? Sure. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Is there yeah. any particular area of the country you would rather go into than others? Um, you know, I again, I'm based, you know, in the in the southeast, but I travel all over the country, so it doesn't really, it doesn't really matter to me. You know, I, I'm sure, you know, we would have to talk about logistics and all that stuff, but yeah, I just, I want to play for people. That's all I'm about, you know? It's getting to the people. Because, you know, it's really weird. It's like this music, when you talk to people, they're like, yeah, I love that stuff. Or, or, or yeah, I think I've heard of those artists or whatever. But once you play it, they're like, oh, yeah. And it's all of a sudden they remember. You know, I just really need to watch the reaction of the music, you know. So, yeah, I want to get to anybody I can get to. How do you think little kids react to you? Because it's way out of their generation. I think they dance because they see people having fun. I think that mm-hmm. it's, it's it's so contagious. It's such a, I mean, when you drop into na 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 na, people go crazy, you know. Even if they've never heard it, like this is great music, you know. So yeah, it, it really is timeless, you know. That's why, you know what? That's why this music has lasted so long. That's why, because you can't mm-hmm. deny yeah. the awesomeness of it, you know. It just can't be denied, you know. Right, I agree. Makes people happy. Yeah. That's what life is. Life should be about. So, do you have kids? I do. And there are how many? Uh, Three kids. Um, two of them grown and living their lives, and I have an eleven-year-old daughter who's unbelievable. She never was surprised, and she's amazing. (laughs) She's so (laughs) talented. She just yeah, she's my joy. Yeah. So, so one of the things I always like to ask all these people I interview, I you know, are any of your kids following in your footsteps? Yeah, they are, surprisingly. My son, my oldest, is a full-time musician. Um, he lives in Atlanta. And then my middle girl, um, yeah, she, you know, when you talk to her, she's a dancer. See, my wife's a, a trained dancer, so ballet, tap, jazz, the whole deal. So 
So my daughters both dance. And but and they all sing like it just kind of was in the house. You, you know, you're gonna be a kid and you gotta learn how to sing. You know, but they've all picked up <laughs> instruments. Um, my both my older kids play guitar. My son plays keys and bass, and he's a producer. And yes, yeah, we're really neat. And I didn't force on any of them. You know, it was it was never a thing where I said you have to play music. It's just they just kind of naturally did it. You know, it's been really neat to watch. You know, it's it's such a you know for a musician, it's a a, a, a true joy to watch your kids kind of come up and, and not only do it, but kind of figure out their own voice, you know, and it's been really neat to watch, you know. Yeah, it's been really neat. Oh, that, that's, that's, that's so cool. Hey, I hear you have a new album out. Yeah, I do. It's, um, you know, when, you know, I do, I'm a, I'm a songwriter, so I put, I put out a lot of um, albums full of original music for years. You know, I probably got nine solo albums and then with other bands that I've played, I've put out tons of records and stuff. But, you know, at my shows, people always say to me, do you have an album of you playing these songs? You know, all the 50s and 60s tunes that I play. And I had never really done a cover song album. Well, we decided um, late last year that we were going to record um, a live. Cause I really wanted to, you know, I kind of was influenced by James Brown at the Apollo. If you ever hear his story, you know, he had put out a lot of albums before that. But nobody really got what James Brown was about until he released that Live at the Apollo album, and that just changed everything for him. I said, you know what? That's what it is about me. Two people, they come and see me live, and it's like, whoa, we need to capture this on tape, if you will, you know? So we recorded um, a two-album set of live music, and we released the first one um, last month, and it's it sounds killer, man. It sounds really, really good. And it has all okay. the cats on it. Yeah, so it's, you have a live album that just released, yeah. We'll put it on our website. We'll track it down, and I can get you some. I can get you some uh, traffic. The album called Live Act One, and then Act Two will come out later this year. Oh, that sounds really good. And you have a new Christmas yeah. song out too. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I have a Christmas album too. Now, the Christmas album we actually released last Christmas, but you know, we we're going to try to put it out every you know every year just as kind of to put it, the music still sounds so fresh, you know, and. But the biggest tune off of that album that I've gotten the most response is I do a version of um, There is Christmas Baby by Otis Redding. And uh, we released a, a whole music video for it, and it, it came out great, and it's getting a lot, a lot of traffic. Yeah, look it up. Billy Buchanan, Merry Christmas Baby. You can find it on YouTube or on my Facebook page. Now, if, when we go to these county and state fairs, so what did you, you have in mind? How long of a performance would you like to do, do you think? Um, you know, I mean, I, I do, you know, anything from 45 minutes to four hours, you know, depending on what you guys want. I think a two-hour show is always a good time, period. You know, it it's not too much, but it's just enough kind of thing, you know. So two hours would be great <laughs> if I could do that, yeah. But, you know, again, whatever's needed. Right. And you're going to bring your 11-year-old and she's going to dance, right? <laughs> yeah, if I can, that'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be good for her, too. <laughs> so. Exactly. I agree. You know how it is with okay. kids, man. Kids are funny, you know. It's like, that's my dad. You know what I mean? <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Yeah, I've yeah. been there. Yeah. <laughs> so. Anyway, so, Mr. Billy Buchanan, how does everybody reach you now? We need to know that. Yes, my website is billybuchanan.org. Again, billybuchanan.org. And Buchanan is spelled like your 15th president. Think about that. <laughs> <laughs> that was a long time ago, dear. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Look it up if you don't know. <laughs> yeah, way before way before my time, okay? <laughs> Mine too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Well, I have thoroughly enjoyed talking to you and I'll see what I can do for you. So all right. thank you, Karen. Carry on. Carry on. Thank you, Karen. Thank you so much. <laughs> bye bye. All right, bye bye.